What's up? It's Josh Hewitt from Top Form Fitness. Once again, time to do it with Hewitt. In this video, I wanted to talk about how to fix your shoulders. So in our flexion dominated society, a lot of people are suffering from exaggerated internal rotation at the shoulders. So from driving, working at the desk, at a computer, uh, all of our technology has us rounded forward. And even in the gym, a lot of people are focused more on uh, like bench pressing, bicep curls, all those, the mirror muscles, the stuff they see in the mirror, pulling them more into that rounded forward posture. So a lot of people are suffering from uh, impingement at the shoulder joint. So they're getting a lot of discomfort due to muscle imbalance and overuse. So what I want to talk about now is some ways uh, to deal with common areas of uh, instability or lack of range of motion, as well as uh, muscle imbalances, common muscle imbalances in areas where people get pain. Before we get into it, if you're dealing with an acute injury or you're having some sharp pain, See a medical professional first of all, have this properly assessed. So the way we're gonna deal with it once you've ruled out any serious injury is first of all, we're going to introduce active range of motion. This means we're gonna avoid passive stretching, forcing any range against uh, external resistance. So we're gonna do unloaded active range of motion through uh, whatever pain-free range you can handle. From there, we're gonna go into isometric or holding the weak positions to strengthen and engage the muscles in those weak positions. And from there, we're gonna progress on to isolation exercises and then reintroduce compound exercises. But when we get back to compound movements, reintroducing those small muscle groups into the kinetic chain of movement, we're gonna first introduce these compound movements isolaterally, so single arm, because we tend to be dominant in one arm versus the other. So we're gonna do single arm movements before we get back into the big two arm push-pull exercises. So getting started, we're looking at uh, active range of motion. And this is simply working within pain-free range. So you're gonna gradually increase range of motion uh, into overhead extension and try to bring your arms as far as you can pain-free. So if you can only bring it to about here before you start having to arch back, that's the range you work with initially. And then gradually over the period of several sessions, several days, increase that active range overhead as far as you comfortably can. You may have more range on one side versus the other, depending on which shoulder is more affected, and that's fine. You wanna work within that active range. Same thing with horizontal extension, bringing the shoulder blades back and working within an active range that way, and then back behind you as well on this plane. And then working with an active range of motion for shoulder rotations, again, where you're pain-free, gradually work within that range, gradually increasing as you're able, and the same thing in the other direction. Okay, and moving on from active range of motion, when you're ready for it and you can do this pain-free and you've started to increase your active range without load, then we're gonna introduce isometric exercises, static holding exercises. Okay, so for the isometric exercises, we're gonna be primarily looking at what I call uh, the Whitey shoulder complex, W-I-T-Y. You're gonna start off with the W position. And this is bringing the elbows into the body, working on as much external rotation as you can handle, and bringing the shoulder blades down, trying not to tense up in your neck. Neutral neck position, retracting and depressing the shoulder blades, and engaging that for at least 10 to 15 seconds. From there, we're going to the I, arms down to the sides of your body, externally rotating the arms, thumbs facing upwards as much as you can, and leaving your legs and hips relaxed. And then we're going on to the T, arms straight out to the sides of the body, thumbs facing up, and finishing off with the Y, overhead, Letting your shoulder blades elevate now. And reaching up, out to the sides, elbows as straight as you can, off the ground, and relax. And you should feel that all in your mid-back around your shoulder blades and scapula. Now we're moving on to isolation exercises. The first one we're gonna look at is called the wall slide. You're gonna come up against a flat wall with your feet off about six to eight inches off the wall. Get your butt, shoulders, and arms against the wall. Rest your head against the wall. Now, depending on your range of motion, your flexibility here, a lot of people can't even get their arms back onto the wall here, but you do want to keep your butt on the wall, and if you're able to, flatten out that lower back. Press that lower back against the wall while your arms are up in like a goal post or 90 degree position at the elbows. So from here, you want to keep your forearms 
your hands and your elbows on the wall and slowly reach upwards, keeping that perpendicular to the floor position of your forearms. Reach upwards as far as you're able until you feel your elbows wanting to come off or your hands wanting to come off the wall. That's the range you can work with. So here's about as high as I can get until my elbows start to come off. I'm a little tight from uh, shoulder workout yesterday. So I can definitely feel this. So you may feel this in the shoulder joint itself, in the deltoids, but after several repetitions, you should feel your mid back or around the shoulder blades really getting involved on keeping that back against the wall as you move within this wall slide position. Okay. So work in the eight to 12 repetition range here, nice and slow, trying to let your arms track along the wall and keeping your back against the wall while you do it, focusing on all of those mid-back stabilizers, all those scapular stabilizers. The next series of isolation exercises is gonna be done with a resistance band. And so with these, we're gonna be doing pull-aparts straight across and diagonally and external rotation. So starting off with the band pull-apart, you wanna take a medium-wide grip so you don't have too much tension in the band, enough that you can keep your arms locked in, so slightly unlocked at the elbow, but not moving the elbow joint throughout the motion. We're working on bringing the shoulder blades together as you pull apart on that band. And again, working into about 10 repetitions, focusing on opening up the chest and squeezing the shoulder blades back together. And then we're gonna do this diagonally as well. As well. So you want your top hand open, bottom hand overhand. So facing upward palm, we want supine, pronated, and leading with the thumb here and leading with the pinky down and below, pulling across diagonally. So the band should track along in line with your arms. Let it out in front of you, and then bring those shoulder blades back as you pull apart on the band. So you should feel this into your mid-back again. You're getting on into the lower trapezius, serratus on the arm that's above. You're getting into rear delt, latissimus in the lower arm, and then you're gonna switch and do the same thing on the other side, equal number of repetitions. Paying attention to if you feel an imbalance or difference left or right. Then we're gonna work on external rotation. For outward rotation, you want one end of the band anchored securely, bend your arm at 90 degrees, and you want to keep your elbow close to the body while you rotate out. Imagine this is the hinge of the, of the door, your arm against your body is the hinge of the door and you're opening the door. So shoulders back, elbow tight to the body and outwardly rotate. Okay. And again, you're going to repeat on the other side, same number of repetitions. For the next series of exercises, we're going to be using dumbbells, free weight. So we're going to be starting off with overhead extension. So for this, I call it a V raise. As I, I want you to lead with the thumbs and bring the arms up, think YMCA. So up into that V position and let them down with control. When you're doing this exercise, try to keep your elbows straight and from here you'll feel a deltoids until you start to come overhead and again, you should feel it into the mid back. Lower traps, serratus, all around below the shoulder blades. Okay, try not to lean back during this exercise. If anything, stay upright or slightly forward so that you have continuous tension throughout the range of motion. Use a weight that you can handle with control and really focus on isolating. These are isolation exercises. We're not trying to build mass here. We're trying to retrain weak stabilizing muscles. Okay, moving on from there, we're gonna do a one arm lateral raise. Now I'd like you to start doing these single arm so that you can really, again, focus on the deltoid, not getting into shrugging while you're working on the small stabilizing muscles. So you will get some supraspinatus, some rotator cuff muscles involved in this as well. If you want, you can hold on to something and lean into it so that you're loaded with continuous tension all the way through a full range of motion and not quite resting at the bottom. Okay? And then again, obviously, repeating same on the other side. And finally, we're going to rear flies for the posterior deltoid bringing the arms out to the side of the body, squeezing between the shoulder blades as well as the back of your shoulders, the rear deltoid, posterior deltoid. 
Try to keep your back flat. You want to maintain a neutral or slightly extended spine in this case. And I like, with, if you're focusing on deltoid, shoulder, to keep your thumbs facing down, pinkies leading the way, elbows leading the way, only slightly unlocked at the elbows. Use a lighter weight and keep your arms as long as possible. Okay, if you find that hard to stabilize from a leaning position, you can also use a bench at a slight incline and just lie forward on the bench. Okay, the next isolation exercises are a little bit unique. We're gonna work on just scapular activation. So here we wanna do scapular elevation, retraction, protraction, and depression. So the first one is just a scapular pull-up. So you're looking at keeping your arms locked out straight, just going into a dead hang, and then bringing your shoulder blades down like a reverse shrug, letting it fall back into a stretch position, and then retract, or sorry, depress the shoulder blades. So we're just doing a scapular or shoulder blade pull-up or scapular depression. Now we're looking at scapular retraction. I prefer to use body weight such as an inverted row for this exercise, but you could do this on a seated row cable row machine as well. Basically, similar idea to the scapular pull-up. In here, you want to keep yourself perpendicular to the floor or to the angle of resistance. Let your shoulder blades fall apart, back rounds, and then keep your arms straight, but pull the shoulder blades together, stick your chest out. Let your shoulder blades fall apart or protract, and then squeeze them straight back together, retract. Okay, we're trying not to get the elbows or arms moving. You're just trying to focus on moving those shoulder blades, letting them glide along your ribs in the back. The final isolation exercise in this series is a scapular push-up. And here we're working on scapular protraction, or pushing the shoulder blades apart. So try not to let your back, your lower back sway or extend too much. Keep a neutral spine, abs engaged, butt tight, shoulder blades come together. You're falling into that retracted position and then you're pressing out into protraction, letting the shoulder blades glide apart on the back. Together and then apart. Again, arms straight, working mid-back. Congratulations, you made it this far. You've passed through the active range of motion isometric and isolation exercise phases, and now we're on to the compound movements. When you start off with this phase with introducing, reintroducing compound exercises, getting those weak areas that you've strengthened back into the kinetic chain of movement, I want you to focus on working each side independently. So isolateral exercises before you get onto two-arm combined movements. So you can still start to favor that weaker side. So let's try to correct that imbalance. Okay, so we're gonna be working with movements uh, within the horizontal, push and pull and vertical push pull uh, planes of, of motion and we want to strengthen both equally or at, in fact focusing more on the posterior chain or pulling movements. The first exercise we're going to look at is a one arm dumbbell row. So with this exercise I want you to focus on first retracting the shoulder blade without shrugging up towards your neck and then bringing the elbow back. Really focus on driving the elbow back towards your ribs with minimal flexion of the elbow. So we're not bringing the dumbbell up towards your chest, we're bringing the elbow back towards your ribs. Lengthen it out, and then retract, and pull the shoulder blade down and back. Okay, equal number of repetitions on both sides. Moving on from there, we're going to a single arm chest press. Now here you wanna really focus on keeping control of your torso. Stay strong and stable in this exercise. I recommend holding a dumbbell on the other hand for balance and then bringing the arm you want to focus on out, even with the chest, not too high up towards your shoulder, 90 degrees at the elbow, and press that straight up without letting your body tilt towards the ceiling. Feel the chest, shoulder, tricep involved, and then slowly bring it out to 90 degrees at the elbow beside your chest. Don't go too deep. Squeeze, control, flex that chest muscle, and then control it back to the start position. Again, 10 to 12 repetitions for three sets. Pain-free range, really isolated, controlled, slow tempo. And then repeat on the other side. 
same number of repetitions. And I recommend you always start with the weaker side and try to match that with the dominant side. Finally, one arm overhead press. You're gonna start right at shoulder height. Now I see a lot of people stopping their overhead press at 90 degrees. You're missing a big part of deltoid involvement from here to here and a lot of shoulder blade scapular stabilizing. So I want you to come right down to the shoulder height here and press straight up. So try to keep your forearm perpendicular to the floor. So not like this with your elbow sticking way out. The dumbbell should be, or wrist should be right over your elbow and then press straight up. You don't have to bring it in overhead. Just keep that forearm perpendicular to the floor. Try and keep that angle the whole time. Wrist over elbow. And again, after you've done your full set, repeat on your other side. Same number of repetitions, same controlled, smooth tempo. If you're not quite strong or stable enough to perform an overhead press movement yet, that's usually one of the last things that will come after a shoulder injury. You can work on gradually increasing the incline on your chest press. So I'm about a 45 degree angle here and you want to start at about a 90 degree angle at the elbow. Don't come too deep past this position yet. Have one dumbbell as a counterbalance and work on the other side in isolation. And then as you become stronger and more stable, you increase the angle of the bench until gradually with back support, you can perform an overhead press and then remove the back support until you're sitting free or standing unsupported for your single arm overhead. Now finally, we're gonna finish up with a single arm lat pull down. So we're looking at a vertical pull movement. You can simply hook up a single handle to a lat pull down, take off the long bar, put on the one hand, and then bring that elbow down along the side of the body, retract and then control full extension on the way up. Again, really focus on keeping that elbow right under your wrist if you can, reaching up, getting the mid back, lat, shoulder blade involved. Try not to make it a bicep dominant movement. Another thing to focus on with this exercise is externally rotating or keeping your arm out in line with your body as best you can. If you don't have a lot of range there yet, you can start off bringing it in front of you and then gradually over a series of workouts, work on opening up that range of motion so you're pulling out to the side of the body. And then again, match that with the other arm, same number of reps. Once you're ready to reintroduce regular compound exercises such as lat pull downs, rows, chest presses, and overhead pressing movements, two arms together. I still recommend you perform these exercises with a very strict, full range of motion and controlled, slower tempo. Really focus on activating the muscles with continuous tension through a full range of motion and enhancing your mind-muscle connection. I also recommend getting strong with push-ups, bodyweight push-up variations, before you progress onto chest pressing free weight exercises. Really learn to control your body with a push-up movement, either feet elevated, hands on the floor, feet on the floor, using TRX straps or rings for stability, weighted push-ups. Get really comfortable and strong with your proper form on a push-up, and then consider moving on to external load once push-ups have gone very easy. Now the duration of time you want to spend in each phase of this corrective program really depends on you. How quickly you're recovering, how well you're progressing, uh, your pain reduction, mobility improvement, and your strength enhancement. So you have to really base it on your own progress, but you want to spend probably a few weeks on active range of motion, a couple weeks on active range until you start to get things moving a little better than isometric exercises, the contracting movements, isolation movements, then the single arm compound exercises before you get back into the big push pull exercises into your regular routine. So really focus on listening to your body and spend a good couple of weeks on each phase as you progress. Now, I posted some more information and links down in the description section below. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll get back to you right away. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and until next time, stay strong.